Bonjour à tous, on se retrouve pour une nouvelle interview, un nouvel épisode d'Entre Deux. Aujourd'hui, j'ai la chance d'accueillir Dustin Sleva, euh, un joueur évoluant au Paris Basketball en Pro B. Throughout my whole life, and then uh, I went to a, a small, got a scholarship to play at a small university. Ended up having a, a really good career there, where I was all-time leading scorer, all-time leading rebounder. And then I got contacted with, you know, agencies to play in Paris. But throughout my time in the States, I played in, uh, you know, like uh, Rucker Park and Dykeman in New York, and played in like uh, different types of events and, and different types of Like any anytime someone asked me to play basketball, I, I go play, you know. So I, I played basically everywhere in the States. When did you understand that you could be a professional basketball player? I always wanted to be and I, I think when I was around 20 to 21 after I had a, a really good season as a junior, um, I had agents contacting me about, you know, being my agent. Um, when I was in college and I kind of knew then that it was a, a high possibility for me to, to play either in the NBA or in Europe. Paris is really far from USA, so why did you decide to come here? Well, I knew uh, um, I had a couple of G League opportunities um, in the States, but I, 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 I really wanted to, to be in Europe for some reason. Like, I really liked the, the European way of how they play basketball and how and the style and how passionate the fans are over here and everything. And I didn't think G League was a good opportunity for me in the way that I play. And I thought Europe, I would have a lot a better experience, which I, I think turned out to be the right decision because uh, my time in Paris has been great. You know, I got lucky enough to to have a club like Paris choose me. You know, that was that was big that I'm going to go Paris for my first year. Like, it's, that's hard to turn down. So um, something like that made me uh, want to come, you know, to Europe to play. Yeah, I understand. And uh What are the biggest differences between basketball in uh, USA and basketball in Europe? I would say in Europe that um, there's less, like especially when you're developed as a European player, there's less of a one-on-one -on -one, um, aspect to their game. I think um, American Europe is good in the way they contrast each other because in the States it's more one-on-one -on -one and less team concepts, even though there are team concepts. In Europe it's all about the team, you know the way you move the ball, the different uh, things that you do. So I think that it's good to have both because you can see you kind of can merge both aspects of basketball and have, you know, a game whether you're like the Spurs, how the, the Spurs and the Cavs played in, um, in a championship that one year. The Spurs, you know, they, they move the ball around. They have a more European system. And the, the Cavs with LeBron and Kyrie kind of just – We're one on one, you know. Uh, I think that, I think that was where. Yeah, so it's kind of that was that's kind of like the two systems like playing at each other. Both can work depending on your personnel. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, European players for the Spurs right. during this cool years. Right, and uh, Popovich does a good job of playing with uh, the the European players and how he, and how his system is, and it's it's a lot more fundamental. It might be a little more boring, but. It's as like someone who really likes to watch basketball, like you and many others do. It's like it's it's really nice to watch, and sometimes the one-on-one -on -one is really ugly to watch for different types of people. So, yeah, I would say that's that's the big difference. It's a beautiful basketball in Spurs and in Europe, yep, for sure. For sure. You are in Paris for three years now. Yeah, this is my third year in Paris. After this year, I'd be I'd be fully in Paris for three years. So yeah. And what do you like here in the city and in the team? What do you like? Um, the team's great. You know, they treat me well. Um, the city I love, even though I can't go right now, I love going to different types of restaurants around the city, different types of cafes, just walking around Paris on a nice day where, you know, there's a lot of people out and everybody's enjoying and it's just a good time and good energy. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's nothing you, you can always find something to do in Paris, whether it's go to a park or go to, go to a museum or go to, You know, just go walk around in a different quartier. Uh, but uh, no, it's a it's a beautiful city, and, and you can't complain. It's one of the nice cities in the world. When you come here, uh, you didn't speak French, so uh, was it difficult to understand your uh, 
teammates, mm. your coach, and all the team? Of course, my my first year we had about six guys that uh, spoke English, so it was a little more easier. And then the French, some of the French spoke English here and there. But you know, you lose a lot of the interaction with your teammates when you don't speak their language and you're out of a lot of conversations. Um, and then my second year, it was I was the only like American and the only one that really like spoke English. So it was kind of I kind of felt like I'm not alone, but you kind of feel like different than everybody else, you know. And then this year, it's kind of like I, I started to learn French like this year during COVID because I had time. And you could tell I'm still not the greatest at French, but uh, you feel more integrated and you feel more like at home when you know the language. So it's like it was kind of a process of like the first two years I didn't I wanted to learn, but like I really didn't because I didn't put an effort. And then when COVID happened, I had kind of had didn't have an excuse. So I was like, all right, I'm actually going to learn. And uh, I spent about 10 hours a week trying to trying to you know perfect the language even though it's i'm, I'm getting close but i still got a, a ways to go okay so do you plan to stay in france uh yeah i would i would love to stay in france for a couple reasons um uh if i stay there for two more years i i can apply for uh my french passport which would be big for my european career so i mean i think at least two more years would be great and i love france and So I wouldn't, I, I think I would be in France for a little bit longer. Okay, cool. And what's your purpose for the next months and next years? What do you want to do in your career? So the next couple of months, I just want to finish the season strong. Um, hopefully, if we win enough games, we could try to get one of those two spots to move into uh, Pro A. Um, if not, you know, it's going to be a hard task. But I mean, I think we have the team that could do it. If not, um, I just want to finish you know, the rest of the season healthy, um, you know, play really well over these next couple months. And then for my career, I just want to play at the highest level possible, you know, do it as long as I can until I can't anymore. And uh, I just want to keep improving. And, you know, I want to I want to reach the heights of European basketball and beyond. I watch some of your games and I really love your game, your your style. Mm. And Uh, you are a player who is able to do a lot of things like you like to shoot three points you go you drive a lot you do a lot of things you can dunk uh, do you like be able to do all these things yeah I, I appreciate you uh, liking my game but yeah that's kind of how I I, w I grew really late and um, when I was young so like I always, I was a point guard at one time in my life when I was in high school And then uh, I kind of just, I kind of developed all around aspects of my game just because I, I grew late and I had to, you know. And now that I'm tall, I still have those elements of my game in me. So it's kind of, I, I just got taller, you know, and now I'm playing like the four. But even when you play the four position in Europe, you're kind of the point guard sometimes, you know. You have to make a decision, you know, late in the shot clock to drive or shoot or make the right pass because... So, uh, other than the point guard, you're the guy making the decision. You know, do I throw it into the big man? If the guy helps down, do I do I swing it to the three for a three? You know, you have to make a lot of decisions, uh, cerebral decisions as a four too. So um, it definitely benefited me a lot to to grow late and develop those skills when I was young. Yeah, it's pretty impressive to be honest. It's pretty impressive to to see a tall guy shoot these three points. It's really cool. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> you're welcome. Do you have any inspiration, any models uh, in basketball? Like any favorite basketball player in history? Uh, my favorite player is LeBron just because I grew up on him. Um, I wouldn't say I model my game after him. He's a little more <laughs> stronger and athletic. And it's LeBron James, so I mean, <laughs> yeah. But um, uh, just growing up, I would just watch like different players in my area play. Uh, uh, And kind of just look up to them, you know, it was like for high school and stuff. I never really had a guy that I looked at and be like, I want to play like him. I just wanted to play. I kind of like how LeBron plays. You know, he could he's, he's a do it all type of player, and I like how he plays with the team. And he he, you know, he gets everybody involved, and he's not like majority an ISO player. That's the guy, my guy that I grew up with. You know, I really enjoyed to talk with you. Thanks, thanks for being here. I wish you all the best for the rest of the season with Paris basketball. And uh, yeah, I, I really wish you all the best in your life, professional and personal. Thanks, my man. I wish the best for you. I hope your channel does great and I was happy to be a part of it. 
Thanks a lot. Appreciate yeah, no it. problem. Merci à tous ceux qui ont regardé la vidéo jusqu'au bout. Euh, en tout cas, moi, j'ai passé vraiment un très bon moment à la tournée. Bon, c'était en anglais, donc euh, forcément, j'ai fait quelques erreurs. Je m'en suis rendu compte sur le coup, mais comprenez-moi avec le stress, tout ça. Euh, en tout cas, voilà, encore une fois, merci beaucoup. N'oubliez pas de vous abonner, de liker et de partager. C'est ça qui motive. On se retrouve très bientôt sur la chaîne pour de nouvelles vidéos. D'ici là, portez-vous bien.